So which Game of Thrones character are you? Hello everybody and welcome to The Meetup, the Filipino free thinkers podcast that's also a video. I am Red and we are joined today by Senator Sunny Trillanes. Sir, uh, welcome to the show and uh, yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Red. So let's jump right into it. Okay. What is the state of the opposition in the country? Like, who are the important factions? Um, what's the composition? Are they working together or are they opposing each other? So what's, what's the state of the opposition? The opposition right now is in the process of consolidating. Um, it may not be evident publicly, but uh, behind the scenes, we have been talking and uh, trying to regroup and organize into one cohesive opposition. The uh, personalities involved, of course, uh, are the uh, minority senators, the minority congressmen, some civil society organizations uh, who have uh, decided to to stand up against uh, Duterte's uh, oppressive uh, uh, initiatives. And also, um, symbolically, it's still the vice president who, who is uh, the leader of the opposition. So you said in your Reddit AMA, which you should all read this, by the way. There's a link in the description. Senator did a, a very good Reddit AMA mm -hmm. that you don't want to be the face of the opposition. So who do you think should be the face of the opposition? And who is it now? Well, right now, um, let's, let's just say that uh, we're taking the cudgels uh, for the time being as uh, the face of the opposition. But uh, as I mentioned, I, I don't want to be the face and I can't be the face of the opposition because um, for some reason um, uh, I am quite a polarizing figure and uh, if eventually you you need somebody who will unite the whole nation then that cannot be me uh, and uh, for that reason the face of the opposition should be Vice President Lenny Robredo. Okay. And you've made it your mission in life to hold Duterte and his family accountable for uh, whatever they've done. So why have you made this to be your mission in life apart from everything else? Well, um, it's just the right thing to do um, in, the, in the pursuit of uh, justice and accountability. We need to set an example uh, and show the whole world that uh, anybody who will kill and oppress uh, the Filipino people should be made accountable. And uh, to this date, the, um, Mr. Duterte has, uh, is responsible for the deaths of more than 20,000 Filipinos. That is uh, excluding uh, the people who already killed in Davao City. Nobody, can get, nobody should get away um, with that. Uh, as for the other members of the family, they have uh, their own uh, criminal uh, activities as well. So at the proper time, these things would be reckoned with. How likely is it that they'll be held accountable before the end of Duterte's term? Uh, I mean, talk about the different scenarios like the International Criminal Court, mm -hmm. impeachment, even people power, or maybe there are even some other scenarios uh, that, can be, that can come to pass. Okay, let's just say that um, we won't stop trying because we cannot wait until the end of his term uh, to make him accountable for his actions because we'll never know how many people he would still kill. So for that reason alone, these things should stop. His administration, his regime should be stopped. And uh, aside from that, he continues to, to erode the... Uh, institutions of uh, our democracy from um, the legislature the judiciary and uh, and to include other sectors of our society like uh, the church the the media and uh, even civil society so uh, let's include business while we're at it so if we wait it out until the end of his term we may not even have a country by then because as Duterte himself mentioned, he wants us to be the uh, Philippine province of China. So um, there are so many reasons. Now, as to the probability that uh, these things would happen, 
Um, I'm a an optimist, so I continue to believe that um, these things will be equalized and uh, and rectified. So I'm I'm confident that he won't be able to finish his term. So it, would it be the ICC? Would it be impeachment? Probably any any of these uh, scenarios would just be fine by me. Speaking of civil society, how can ordinary citizens make the most meaningful contribution to the opposition? The biggest contribution right now is uh, to convince yourself that uh, evil is reigning in our country and Duterte is at the forefront of such a regime. Now, after you've done that, you need to convince the people around you. Because so many uh, Filipinos are still naive or um, totally oblivious of what's uh, happening and what Duterte has been doing in our country. So that's the biggest contribution that, that uh, the ordinary Filipino um, could make. Then uh, aside from, then he can start influencing the outer circle from the family the immediate family, relatives, friends, and uh, they can be influencers as well. So uh, that's going to be a big thing. On that point, how, how have you yourself been doing on, on this front, like convincing your friends, family? Do you still have close, close friends and relatives who are supportive of this administration? And how do you deal with them? Um, well, fortunately, uh, none. Uh, most of my um, my fam my family and my friends, uh, even my high school classmates, PME classmates, uh, most of them, at least uh, ninety percent at least, uh, are against Duterte. Yeah. So, at least uh, it shows that some of my convincing skills are still working. Oh, great. <laughs> so one of the reasons it's very hard to convince people mm -hmm. is social media. Mm -hmm. Cambridge Analytica and its parent company, SEL, has just shut down. Mm -hmm. And now you want to, I think you, you mentioned somewhere that you wanted to start a probe into that mm -hmm. in the Philippines. So can you tell us about that? Do you think the same happened here in our country? Well, they admitted as much. Uh, but I think more than uh, what Cambridge Analytica did because they just provided um, the data. But I think what really did us in or what made Duterte win is the use of um, propaganda, the effective use of propaganda or outright lies or what we call now as fake news. Prior to, 20, to the 2016 elections, um, Facebook as a platform was uh, used mainly by people who assume that every everything that's uh, posted there are genuine and uh, true. So when these fake news started coming out, like Davao City being the safest city in the world, people uh, tended to believe that. And uh, they did. And it carried on until the end of the elections. And the, um, the strategy, and uh, I'll give due credit to them for uh, successfully deceiving everyone, was uh, it was subliminal. They came in first with that lie, the, that original uh, fake news, which is Davao City being the safest city in the world. Then after that, they created a clamor for Duterte to run. Then during the campaign, regardless of the red flags, that have been uh, displayed by uh, Duterte himself through his pronouncements, his apologies, his believers would go back to that original I mean, lie by saying, it's fine that uh, it's just okay that uh, he would cast the Pope for as long as he would make the Philippines the safest uh, country, just like what he did in Davao City. Mm -hmm. So they kept on going back. going back to that. So for as long as that lie, um, has uh, um, has yet to be shattered, then they would continue with that perception that uh, Duterte is a visionary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 
according to your Wikipedia page, you yourself won an election thanks to Friendster. So it yeah. was still Friendster back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arab Spring, Tunisia, mm-hmm. these are good examples of what can happen when yeah. social media is used for democracy. Now we have to contrast with that Cambridge Analytica. Mm-hmm. So do you think that today social media is on the balance a tool for democracy or more for dictatorships? Um, I believe, uh, you see, I'm a, um, I'm a romantic. I'm uh, a believer that uh, ultimately the good will prevail. And the, this uh, bad stuff or the negative stuff that, uh, that's happening, even in uh, rel- um, a, what's preconceived as an innocent platform as Facebook, they can try to tinker that, uh, with that, but ultimately they will be exposed and they will be discovered and um, again, they would be sidelined. Um, as it should be. And that's why I'm confident that uh, with the ex- massive uh, exposés on uh, fake news, at least now, um, the human race has, uh, has learned from all of that. So despite your focus on Duterte, you still manage to be one of the most productive public servants in terms of your bills passed and all that. So other than Duterte, what are the pressing issues of the country that you think people should be focused on and aware of at least? The, the, the problem right now is m- uh, most of the major problems of the country are linked to Duterte. Like uh, the economic hardships being faced by the Filipinos, which was brought about by this uh, disastrous uh, Duterte train law. Um, so that's the culprit. He was the one who pushed it. And according to him, this is the best Christmas gift that uh, he could give to the Filipinos. And uh, inflation right now is, while the data is saying around 4 to 5%, but uh, out there in the streets, it's going as high as 20%. And um, it's quite unbearable for uh, the poor Filipino families. So that's one major problem. The other problem is um, the the peace and order problem, um, which Duterte has been uh, trying to mess up, like uh, the peace talks with the the NPAs. From the time he assumed office up to the present, I think he flip flopped for at le- uh, for at least five times. Whether he's pursuing peace, then all out war, peace, all out war. So. In either track, you won't gain any headway. So that's another uh, problem. As far as um, employment generation is concerned, uh, you have martial law in Mindanao, you have all these pronouncements, you have this EJ case, and uh, the foreign investors are quite worried about setting up businesses here. And uh, worse, Duterte keeps on... um, doing policy actions that would lay off people, a lot of people, like the one he did in Boracay, um, the one in uh, with this uh, Miascor, and uh, the other impulsive acts that he's been doing. So all of these are connected to Duterte in the, the West Philippine Sea situation, for example. That sellout is very evident, and again, Duterte is at the forefront. So you cannot escape the problem like Duterte. One of the other issues that I keep mm-hmm. thinking we're not focusing enough on now mm-hmm. is the pork barrel or PDAF scandal. Mm-hmm. Uh, Napoles, you yourself said that you refused to get into dealings mm-hmm. uh, because you knew it would go go there. I read that in the Reddit yeah, AMA. Yeah. You, should, you, you should really check that out. Like, do you think that the Duterte administration is distracting from that, uh, from following through on that investigation? And how likely is it that more people will be brought to justice? Because according to the findings before, there are so many people involved, but only a few were were thrown in jail. So how likely is it that even more politicians will be thrown in jail? Um, it's very unlikely because uh, most of those uh, initially implicated in that uh, Napolis scam are are now allies of uh, Mr. Duterte. And um, 
just a few months back, um, Kalida and the Justice Department uh, um, through Aguirre made moves to actually exonerate Napoles by making her a state witness so that she would be used against uh, the political opposition. So you can't expect uh, much out of this uh, administration. On to another topic. You said before that you were against divorce. Um, is, is, that, is that still your stance now? And how likely is it that divorce will pass, uh, given that it, it you know, passed the lower house very fast? So what's happening in the Senate? Um, well, based on the, the polls in the Senate, um, most of the senators are not uh, receptive to the passage of uh, the di divorce bill. Now, as to my position, uh, let's just put it in uh, in the proper context. I believe, well, personally, I'm trying to prioritize the more basic problems of the country. I'm not shutting down uh, on that uh, uh, scenario about uh, allowing divorce in our country later on. But for me, I'd rather focus on the real problems that we're facing right now. I'm not saying that um, the uh, divorce issue is not a problem, but um, compared to the EJ case, the uh, West Philippine Sea situation, the corruption, etc., I believe um, somebody needs to, to focus more on that. Now, my position is, um, being a centrist, is I uh, pose the challenge to the proponents of uh, divorce. You need to convince the Filipino people that uh, it is uh, necessary. Because in the um, polit uh, political dynamics in our country, once the politicians feel that uh, the Filipino society, meaning a lot of people are for it, then most politicians would would follow uh, their constituents because after all, we are representatives of the people. What about marriage equality? Uh, Same-sex mm, marriage? That's, uh, that's even another level. Yeah. Okay, um, on that end, um, let's include in the conversation the uh, LGBT um, yeah. issue. Yes. On that end, I believe... Um, my primary initiative uh, as regards the LGBT issue is the uh, being the principal author of the, um, the anti-bullying law. Because I believe if you would have a tolerant society, then eventually we would be able to embrace uh, such uh, issues. And it starts with the kids. I remember when uh, we were kids, kids who have um, deformities, physical deformities, or who have um, non-conventional sexual orientations would be bullied and would be uh, um, made fun of by kids. By having this law, you would have a more tolerant uh, uh, generation of kids and these kids eventually will grow up to be adults and they would be uh, more open to such uh, societal uh, developments. You were against uh, reproductive health before, yeah. uh, when it was still a bill. Mm -hmm. Now that it's a law, it's been implemented for several years, it has passed so many constitutional and legal hurdles. Mm -hmm. Are you still against uh, reproductive health now that it's a law? Okay, um, let, let me clarify that. I am against the specific provisions of the reproductive health law. Mm -hmm. I'm not against the use of condoms and uh, uh, pills because I, I, we, we use that uh, as a couple. Um, so I'm not against yeah. that. Besides, it's not prohibited. You can buy it over the yes. counter. But what I'm against is the um, sexual education for grade 6 students because we know that Filipinos... Filipino grade 6 students are not as mature as um, grade 6 students of Western nations. I believe the state um, shouldn't intervene into that uh, phase of the development of these uh, 
kids that young, it should be left to the parents. During my time, we had the sex education and then I was on my fourth year. So we were taught how to use condoms and um, other um, um, reproductive health uh, um, what's this, uh, devices or things. So that's, I believe that's the more appropriate time. Then next, what I was against was the um, government funding reproductive health needs of uh, the people. They intend to put in, um, I think, 4 billion pesos for that. For what? For condoms? So I, when I interpolated the sponsors of the reproductive health law, how, how, how many condoms will you give? And to whom? Um, how young is young? Would an 88-year-old child uh, be able to avail of uh, such freebies if they go to a health center? They were never clear about that. And there's corruption. If you allow everyone to go in and get uh, free condoms, then an enterprising um, uh, person would just ask, people to line up and get condoms and he would buy them at a, a such a discount and he will exactly. sell them at a full price. So all of these things were not resolved. And I believe that uh, the state should not subsidize the, the uh, condom needs of uh, its citizens because they can never quantify that. A teenage couple would uh, have a more frequent uh, sex than um, middle-aged couples. So, how do they do the distribution? So, there are so many loose ends in, in, that, uh, in that bill or in that law. And another one is the, uh, that provision that would basically allow um, abortion even up to the third trimester of, uh, oh, of that pregnancy was, that was not in the in the law no it it, it was uh, and it's it was um, was this um, placed there in very scientifically sounding uh, words that's why uh, when I interpolated again the sponsor one provision there was that a pregnant woman, would not be uh, deprived of reproductive health, uh, of medically accepted reproductive health procedures. And if the medical practitioner, whether a nurse or a doctor, would refuse, then they would be criminally liable. Okay? Now, if, uh, when, so I said, if uh, a pregnant woman would request for a dilation and curatage, which is a medically accepted reproductive health procedure, even if she is about to give birth. Of course, the doctor would refuse, right? Because he can't do that uh, to a living baby. But based on that law, if he refuses, he would be criminally liable. And that's why I injected that in the interpolation to make sure that uh, these things are not allowed. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how much does your being a Christian affect your making laws? And what do you think about the separation of church and state? And what do you think uh, particularly of politicians who wear that religion on their sleeves? I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think you do, mm -hmm. but certainly some of your colleagues like mm -hmm. Senator Soto, Senator Pacquiao, okay. yeah. they use Bible verses essentially to... Mm -hmm to argue while legislating in public. So what, what's your thoughts on secularism? Well, uh, I believe uh, even in, in the Bible, uh, secularism is uh, precisely what was taught. What uh, is uh, God's is God's, what is Caesar's is Caesar's. So I believe that um, it should be separate and it is. Uh, separate as far as I'm concerned I'm policy research driven in my uh, my policy making and legislation 
so i it doesn't really affect but um again i am a um what's this in policy making there's such a thing as a stakeholder analysis if for example you're pushing for a, a bill a secular bill but which is actually a right thing or a good thing but if you push it there'll be a civil war would you no you can't that's why you have this stakeholder analysis you cannot just disregard um dissenting voices and that's why earlier i i said the challenge is for the proponents you start on the ground you start convincing people that uh, it's the way to go speaking yeah. of celebrities like soto and uh, senator soto senator pacquiao what do you think of credentials for becoming a senator or a congressman like how important are they or is it just enough that you care about the people without getting like training in public service and stuff like that um well to me to, to be fair to everyone it's not about the credentials or how you actually won but it is actually how you use your power as a senator um, that's more important because you can be the most brilliant uh, lawyer around uh, you can be the most eloquent uh, most uh, uh, intelligent person but if your principles are skewed then it won't matter uh, and uh, it won't mean much just like what's happening now um, a lot of the senators are well educated but if they stand by mr duterte then that education is out the window right yeah. so assuming um, you'd have a celebrity who has no education but is consistent in standing up for the interests of the people then i take that guy anytime so our electorate keeps electing people who do not stand by principles that are good for um, people like you like you say mm. so what do you think about our citizenry like how mature is our electorate again to be fair to the filipino electorate um they they just base their decisions on what they see so it's really up to the candidates like uh, the case of mr duterte um there's so many educated people who actually um voted for mr duterte not because um they they're not uh, aware of all these things but they bought the lines of mr duterte when he said he's going to rid the country of crime, corruption, and illegal drugs in three to six months without blinking an eye, you'd be convinced that, okay, let's give this guy a chance. So it's not their fault that they were fooled, mm. right? Like uh, the budol-budol phenomenon in the country. You don't blame the victims. You, you blame the people who are actually fooling them. Yeah. Uh, our electoral process is not prepared for that we're not uh, um, we're, we don't have a system to prevent such things from happening so the Filipino people um, it's a hit or miss they they can vote for somebody good actually once in a while but they can vote for a total disaster like uh, Mr. Duterte also so it, it happens so I believe at some point it's up to the the media or um, the non-traditional and the traditional media to present the truth to scrutinize the candidates their track record um, their their positions their all these red flags they should open the eyes of uh, the electorate then come election day whether um, they bought these all these uh, inputs or not would be up to them what do you think about the government investing in critical thinking for the people like give teaching critical thinking via the department of education or some other project or even media literacy mm -hmm. like to, to inoculate the public from fake news mm -hmm. to make them immune from people trying to fool them what, what do you think about such an initiative i'm i'm all for that because uh, 
the, the truth never harmed anyone. And uh, it's something that uh, the society needs, especially uh, at this moment. So if we could have that embedded in our educational system, that will um, promote or enhance the critical thinking or creative thinking of uh, the Filipino people, then we, we stand to benefit uh, later on once uh, they become the leaders of our society. A lot of people think that um, someone who's good at critical thinking, in fact, a master tactician, is uh, President Duterte. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the master plan? Is there even a master plan? Some people think that it's keeping the seat warm for Bong Bong Marcos when he wins the, the protest, mm -hmm. or even like uh, keeping the seat warm maybe for even GMA. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is actually the master plan, like Duterte's long-term goal? Well, based on our analysis and the profiling and intel of Mr. Duterte, Duterte is all about Duterte. Um, he doesn't want to share it to anyone. Definitely not Bong Bong, definitely not GMA. The, some conspiracy theorists yeah. would tend to think that way, but if you profile Duterte, you would know that um, this guy doesn't trust anyone except probably Sara Duterte. So everything, the master plan is for him to stay in power and continue to deceive the people and uh, hopefully he dies in office and perpetuate that uh, legacy, that false legacy that uh, he has created. That's his plan. There was never uh, an economic plan or a peace plan, nothing. They're just um, winging it uh, as they go along. And uh, all these moves right now, tinkering with the Constitution, the RevGo um, scenario, all of this is about or are about um, perpetuating uh, himself His in power. power. If someone like Bong Bong were to replace him, do you think mm -hmm. that would be better for the country? Or maybe someone like GMA, what do you think? No. <laughs> um, oh, uh, a bad person is a bad person. You can never say that uh, one is uh, more evil than the other because ultimately it's the country um, that suffers, the Filipino people uh, that uh, would suffer in one form or another. You cannot uh, say that um, this tyrant is better than this tyrant because to me, they're all the same. Yeah. You, we need to ha have a break from all these bad uh, leaders and finally get a succession of good leaders. And it starts with being a good person. That's why I, I emphasize that. Um, the eco um, academic credentials, the experience are secondary. That person needs to be a good person first. Then after that, he needs to have, he or she needs to have that vision for the country. It's very clear. It should be very clear where uh, they would lead this country. Um, they would lead this country uh, to that place and eventually convince everyone that uh, this is where we need to go. And that's after all of those, uh, all, uh, after that, then you check the credentials. If they are capable of, uh, of delivering on that uh, vision, because you can be a, um, a dreamer and a glib uh, salesman and convince people that you can go there, but you don't have the tools to do that. So all of these things uh, should, should be incorporated in... Uh, scrutinizing our leaders and imagine if we would have such a leader for two or three um, successive times then we would be up there in the uh, developed uh, nations do you think such people already exist or have already been born and um, who do you think for the next president name top three people you think fit this role of uh, you know having integrity being a good person while having the credentials mm -hmm and that vision yeah. and can bring the country there. Okay, I can name at least two. Yeah. Uh, you have Lenny Robredo and uh, Grace Poe. 
um, at least uh, I have profiled them enough to say that uh, they are good people. They, um, their hearts are in the right uh, place. Then they, they have a vision for the country. And uh, I can imagine they also would want to surround themselves with like-minded uh, persons who would help them get to that place. So speaking of being a good person, like a lot of people say that no, nobody's really evil. It's just, you know, people have different beliefs of what's good and what's evil. So do you think that Duterte ultimately, like in his heart of hearts, is trying to do good in the, the best way that he knows how for the Filipino people? Or is he, you know, just malicious? You know, is he ignorant? Like he, he just bases his decisions on things that are not true? Or does he have uh, negative things in mind? Okay. Oh, well, um, I totally disagree. I believe there are good and bad or evil persons. Um, I've heard uh, the testimony of uh, Mr. Las Cañas. Uh, he, uh, I, have, uh, I, was, uh, I interviewed him uh, long uh, before he eventually, um, or long after he testified in the Senate. In th there's just one incident. Wherein they were deciding whether to kill that four-year-old child, and without hes any hesitation, Duterte gave the go signal to have that child killed. Now tell me, regardless of what spin you would make, a person who would give such an order is a bad person. There's no belief system that would justify killing that four-year-old child, right? So and. Here comes this uh, this killing spree that uh, we have, and I maintain my position that uh, the uh, war on drugs of Mr. Duterte is a, a sham. It is a way, a way for him to control society, not really to eradicate uh, eradicate uh, illegal drugs. So he's been doing that. He's been at it for years. There is no vision, even in Davao. There's no vision. Um, the developments there happen despite of Mr. Duterte. So, I re there's no redeeming value, to be honest. So, if not Duterte himself, maybe some people around him are worthy of your respect or even admiration. So, who among the people who support him around his close inner circles do you think at least is in it for good? Well, I can say uh, Secretary Lorenzana, um, General Año. Uh, the uh, the LG secretary. Um, who else? Um, they say that uh, the new DOJ secretary is a good guy. So we'll see. But um, for now, there are some bright spots. Yeah. With Bato out of the picture, do you think that the EJ case will finally stop or even lessen significantly? No. As I mentioned, the EJ yeah. case. Uh, the the war on drugs or the killing, uh, the killings in particular, um, is the brainchild of uh, Mr. Duterte. The Bato de la Rosa is just one of the instruments to to enforce that. So, whether Duterte and the people who are enforcing this drug war is brought to justice, you, you're optimistic about that about that happening. But what do you think about the citizens? Who supported and still support the drug war, even knowing that there are EJKs happening. So, what kind of accountability can there be for these people? Well, the there are enablers, and even the ICC would uh, be looking at and investigating those people who have been promoting the EJKs consciously. Mm. And as for the citizens who are just supporting it. Uh, despite the killings, um, there's a word for that, uh, gaba. Uh, they'll, just, they'll just wait for a karma or something. Because uh, lo look at the, the, um, some of the victims of the EJ case. Most of them are actually voters of Duterte and espouse that, uh, that uh, thinking that it's okay for these people to get killed because they're uh, non-productive elements of society anyway until 
uh, they or their their loved ones um, fell victim to such war on drugs. So today is World Press Freedom Day, and we've dropped six spots to 133rd in the world. Mm -hmm. Do you think we deserve that that ranking and that drop in our ranking? And how do we fix this problem? You can only fix that problem once you take out uh, Mr. Duterte. Duterte has no respect for the media at all because it is um, an instrument or a tool of uh, democracy to expose his uh, wrongdoings. And uh, if you would study closely the Davao template, that's one of the first things that he did. He suppressed uh, media freedom, so nobody dared to scrutinize his uh, administration and one when there was one radio broadcaster who exposed corruption in his government he had this guy killed Pala, June, Pala, right? June Pala so yeah. after that there are no more reports of any wrongdoing and that's his key it's not uh, because he's not into corruption it's just because there's there's nobody support uh, reporting this uh, corruption uh, activities in his administration so he propagated that uh, that myth that um, not only is he a visionary but he is also uh, not into corruption where do you get your news and who are your favorite journalists um i get my i actually have in my, in my ipad um, different uh, apps no um was it different windows or tabs ah, okay, okay. Um, inquirer um, rappler uh, gma uh, then um, so that's the basic uh, news then we have this um, chat also in viber wherein other sources are being um, shared in that uh, in that chat so i get to see them as well okay I, I read that you like Game of Thrones. Yeah. So which Game of Thrones character are you? Well, um, I, the uh, probably politically incorrect, but uh, I I admire the the character of Jaime Lannister. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what final message would you want to deliver to your supporters and your critics? Well, I'm I'm just here. I continue to to do what uh, I need to do, um, being part of the opposition, is uh, a significant part or an essential part of a democracy. If um, nobody would uh, check on the abuses of government, then they would uh, have it their way. So for as long as I'm here, uh, I'll continue to do that. Thank you, Senator, for your time. Thank you.